say when it comes to Zelda Undertow viewers, other than it's my favorite series in freaking existence. Literally, Link and the Triforce are tattooed on my feet. So really, Link is with me every step that I make. Take that info as you may. I want you to all know though, my most beloved handheld Zelda game was Oracle of Seasons. Now this game with its 8-bit graphics was actually really smooth for a Game Boy Color game and I thought it was all around beautiful, but that might just be the inner fangirl speaking. However, the music too always had you singing, well, more like dootin'. Do 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 do. Now we join our young hero Link as he is in the forest with a new lady friend he met. Her name is Din and she's a dancer. After partying it up and dancing the day away with Din and her friends, evil soon arrives, cause let's face it, it wouldn't be a Zelda game without a damsel in distress. Oh, and hate it as you may, I love this game for straying away from the typical Zelda in distress. I enjoy having Din there. Link is probably thinking in his head though, the things I do for these women. Link soon discovers that Din is the Oracle of Seasons, and with this information, she's kidnapped by the evil master of darkness, Onyx. The seasons begin to alter in various lands around the kingdom as Onyx traps the Oracle and buries the Temple of Seasons below Earth. Once Link awakens after his ambush, he talks to Impa, who is one of Din's fellow friends. Impa explains that she's hurt and she needs Link to find Din and restore peace to the land of Hyrule. You're given a message to go to the Meku tree and talk to him. However, you cannot enter at first unless given the sign that you're a hero. What does that mean? Well, it's a Zelda game. Time to get a sword and kick some ass. Yes, once you get your sword, you're on the way to talking to this hunk of wood. Thus, you're given your first task and you're led to a dungeon. Now, the controls on Game Boy for this game were pretty easy. You had A and B, and those could be assigned to whatever item in your start menu that you wanted to put in them. Usually your sword would be in one, and as you got other items, you'd alternate them into your other slots. Later in the game, you earn the Rod of Seasons. And it's pretty important to the game, I mean, hello, it's called Oracle of Seasons. You could charge this rod with the power of the seasons as you unlock them. And when you'd gain the power of the seasons, you'd simply stand your ass up on a stump, and with a swish of that rod, the seasons change right before your eyes. But just to take a view on areas and the design of the zones in this game, they were very well put together. There are certain areas that you need the Rod of Seasons to change the season in. This is so that you can pass across a lake that needs frozen, or use a flower to get a boost. The zone though that is by far the champion of this game is the Underground Society of Sabrosia. These little Sabrosians really got some attitude too. I mean, they got dance competitions, boomerangs, and they take baths in lava. Sabrosia is also the new location for the Temple of Seasons after it had been buried. Oracle also goes to the extreme of giving you animals to help you along the way. The ones I remember were Ricky the Kangaroo, who I think was a total pun of Rocky, Dimitri, who was a little Dodongo that you could take through different areas of water, and you also had good old Moosh, the flying bear. All in all, they were a creative bunch, but I'd have to say Ricky was my favorite. Kangaroos in general just rule. If you haven't played this game yet, you really need to, especially if you're a Zelda fan. I know it's old, but it's a classic. Providing hours upon hours of amusement through the boss battles, even the ones that make you want to rip your hair out. Seasons is definitely a game to be cherished by anyone who's a handheld player. <laughs>